Over the holiday season, I had the opportunity to meet with uh, Rotary International President Ravi Ravindran. Ravi is from Sri Lanka. He started uh, serving his term July 1st of this year. I, this is a rare opportunity because oftentimes Rotarians don't get an opportunity to see the person behind the presidency. And this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to actually meet Ravi one-on-one, -on -one, talk to him, and give the audience an opportunity to see what it's like to say, spend time with an RA president, Rotary International president, and also what, what it's like uh, to be in his shoes. So we talked about quite a few things. We aired this, uh, actually taped it in Arcadia at a different studio. And what we will do then is show you excerpts of that via video um, interview. The international president of Rotary, uh, every three years, believe it or not, or every three terms, their, their term is actually one year. Every three years, Rotary has a president that comes from North America. The other two years, that president is selected, is selected from around the world in one of the other international countries that Rotary is represented in. This year, Ravi from Sri Lanka, uh, I had an opportunity to meet with him probably four or five years ago when he was uh, treasurer of Rotary International. And I could see at that time he was one outstanding man. He was a man with a passion, a vision, something extraordinary, exceptional, uh, not only among Rotarians but among people. That was the first time that I met him and I would say that I was very impressed with the professionalism and the vision and his ability to get things done. When you work uh, with a president and you see what presidents are doing, uh, what stands out in my mind, uh, different from all the other Rotarians, is their exceptional leadership and what they do. And that leadership is based on a vision, goals that they set to try and make things better around the world. Their passion, their passion in life is to go ahead and change things, to make things better for not only Rotarians but everybody around the world. That's what sets um, them apart from the average Rotarian. The average Rotarian, uh, being people like you and me, do not always have an opportunity to meet with the president themselves, see them personally, and that is what this show is going to be based on. I brought with me some pictures, uh, some photos, showing um, how we met. One of the opportunities that I have working with the Rotary Rose Parade Float Committee is that I spend time and actually serve as the aide to the president each year for, for about a week's time. The first picture shows Ravi, Ravi and his wife, uh, Vanity. With, they came in from Sri Lanka. I picked them up at the airport. Literally, they were four days in Sri Lanka, their home, and that was about it. Um, that's the only time, by the way, that Ravi has been home this whole year, since July 1st. And he told me quite literally, he says, well, it's freezing here in California. I can't believe it. I came from 80 degrees every day, high humidity in Sri Lanka. Now you're expecting me to... Uh, handle this 30 and 40 degree weather. So that was one of the hardships. He did not talk about the jet lag. He talked more about the temperature changes. The next picture that we have shows what we call the Rotary, uh, I'm sorry, the International President's Summit. And that International President's Summit is when we, as the Rotary Rose Parade Float Committee, get together and we bring the president of Optimus, the president of Lions, the president of Kiwanis, all together for a lunch, a brunch. This brunch is a summit that we sponsor, we host. It is the only time ever in the year that these four great leaders, world leaders, will get together. So that is one of the opportunities that we have in meeting with and giving them the chance to talk to uh, the broad picture. Now imagine this, you have probably close to four million people that are working for humanity and they're all met, meet together with the leadership at this one time. We also host a dinner for him. The picture here shows Ravi. Uh, he's the keynote speaker of a dinner that we hold in his honor. Well, now that I think about it, I don't know what a great honor is when he has to do the work to earn his dinner, but that's part of what we do. Pictures coming up show the picture of him on the float, um, the Rotary Rose Parade float during the Tournament of Rose Parade. This is a picture of him coming down Colorado Boulevard with the entry that we do as a Rotarians. The picture shows him in the front, and you can see there's, there's a, a large smile on his face. He was very happy uh, and anxious to be part of that float, and uh, we appreciated very much him being there. But he said it was one of those opportunities of a lifetime. He really enjoyed it, and one thing that makes it exceptional in his leadership is the fact that he enjoyed it. A lot of times, some, Ro some Rotarian presidents have considered it being a little bit more work than not, but he thoroughly enjoyed himself, and that reflected on him representing Rotary International on this float. We also have a picture of him in Brazil with the Brazilian contingent. 
last year during the RI Rotary International Convention held in Brazil. Another picture shows him with um, German Rotarians at a teaching hospital in Sri Lanka. Part of the work that he does is traveling around the world, and the reason that he's never home is because he goes and endorses and brings and motivates those people and all the great projects that Rotary does worldwide. Next picture is of an incubator, another one of the projects that we have. Uh, and the picture following that is a picture of one of the patients, the success stories of the incubator. This incubator project, by the way, was funded by the Rotary Foundation, initiated by Rotarians and a Rotary Club. The last picture that I have here shows a picture of him in his professional life. Ravi is a very uh, successful businessman. His job is as a printer, and he prints uh, products uh, for the world, around the world. This picture shows him and his son, Kishna, uh, and part of the work that they do. Now, Ravi's going to be gone probably two or three years, and so he left the business in the hands of his son. That is one of the opportunities that uh, a president would have is that they have to leave their business. The opportunity is that they serve world, they serve humanity for at least three, four years consistently and very, very uh, strenuous, I would say. I would like to thank uh, Ron Wilson for allowing us to use his studio to videotape this, this interview. Ravi could not make it up to our studios itself, but uh, he was gracious enough to offer this time for him. The interview, by the way, that you're going to see occurred at this uh, Arcadia studio. And I would say, uh, unlike ours, it, it's, uh, it wasn't heated. And you will see Ravi, <laughs> he had a cold, by the way, and so it's going to be a little bit hoarse and I had a hard time talking. And he also said that coming from 60 degrees, jumping into, I'm sorry, 80 degrees, jumping into a studio that was 60 degrees, he had a hard time keeping, uh, not chattering during the interview. So with that, we hope that you'll enjoy the show that I posted for you. We talked about Ravi. I want you to focus on the man behind Rotary International President. This is a man right now that is tasked with leading 1.2 million Rotarians around the world in humanitarian efforts that we will all benefit from. So with that, en enjoy the uh, video. Thank you. Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. With us today, we are very privileged to have with us the International Rotary President, Ravi Ravindran. Ravi, tell us a little bit about yourself. Nice being here in uh, sunny California, I thought. <laughs> That's what you told me anyway. <laughs> yes. <coughs> and uh, I'm here for this Rose Parade. It's a, it's a first time experience for me, and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> what do you think about the weather? <coughs> We see the sun's out, but it's uh, not exactly warm in here. <laughs> I know. You, you, that's what I said. You promised sunny California. It's, it's more like, uh, you know, winter California. <laughs> well, we have the sun. We promised that. We didn't <coughs> promise the heat. <laughs> so thank you very much. How did you get involved with Rotary? Um, what drove you to I, I was after university. I was 21 years old, and I was working uh, my family tea plantations. It was a very lonely life, and uh, my parents, father, grandfather were already in Rotary. That's my idea. So when uh, I heard they were starting a Rotary Club, uh, they actually came in search of me and said, why don't you join me here that you, have, you come from a Rotary family. And since I was lonely, <laughs> since I was looking for family, uh, since I was looking more for you know, networking and friends, I thought it was a great idea to join Rotary. Service was the furthest from my mind at that point. The service starts growing on you. It's not one day you wake up and say, wow, I've got to do this service. It just grows on you because you move with people who are inclined that way. And that's what connects you and keeps you together within the club. True, very true. Now, we've talked uh, about a Rotary moment. Is there one that stands out in your, your time, in your history in Rotary? Oh, I can tell you many, many things that stand out. But like I said, uh, Wade, it's no single moment which really sucks you into Rotary. It's a culmination of a series of events. And one day you find that you're completely involved. It didn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. So I can give you several incidents, but it was not those incidents which dragged me in. It, I got dragged in and those, and those incidents happened because I got dragged in and because mm -hmm. I was part of Rotary. Understand. So I really wouldn't uh, pinpoint one single event and call it a Rotary moment for me. Okay. Some of the best moments for me, in fact, is uh, 
not so much the some of the most uh, fantastic projects I have done and I have been involved in some truly large scale community service projects. But for me some of the most nicest moments in Rotary is when I am travelling and I meet up with someone like you and you invite me over to your home and we sit and have dinner together, we sit in the carpet and we have a drink together and spend two hours talking. <laughs> That's very true. Um, I've seen that and it's the camaraderie that brings us all together. There's a large part of it along with the service. Now what motivated you to become a gov uh, president? It's a, it's a, I would say it's a natural process of organic growth in Rotary. You are a governor, you become director, then you begin to see a larger picture of Rotary and then you think well maybe we did this, things would be better. I mean one of the things I wanted to do was find ways of adding value to Rotarians. And if I became president I knew I could influence the board and point them in that direction. And I must confess when I put my name in for president I didn't think I was going to get it. And when I got it I was a little surprised. But now having got into the job I want to, s I want to make sure that I try and deliver what I conceptualized and what I promised them. Now in your um, Rotary history, you start as a member, then you become a club president, go on to become a governor, then a director. Tell us about that part of the process. Um, as, as you joined Rotary, did you expect <coughs> to become a club president? When I joined Rotary, I was uh, barely lucky I didn't get sacked. <laughs> I wasn't a very good Rotarian, I wasn't keeping my uh, attendance, but eventually all that fell into place. I was very fortunate because at every stage when I held an office, uh, the club was able to make a substantial contribution. I mean when I was a president, we started, uh, my club started uh, anti-narcotics association which today is uh, of course many decades later is the foremost anti-narcotic association in the country mm -hmm. with over 30 odd thousand members, we are not Rotarians. We are reaching to schools, we are reaching to workplaces. Um, uh, we are the number one anti-narcotics agency in the country. Wow. Uh, when I was governor, I, I was uh, part of a big project uh, the district was involved in. Uh, I was able to bring into the country people like Carlos Conseco, who was the father of Polio Plus, uh, Professor Christian Barnard, the great heart surgeon, and I was able to uh, showcase Rotary like it had never been done before. Uh, got the government involved and then of course we got on to polio. And that was the time I was governor. Uh, I became the chair of the polio committee and we achieved a lot of big things. I mean Sri Lanka became the first country in South Asia to become polio free and I would say 90 percent of the credit went to the Rotarians. Wow. I mean we even stopped a war. So uh, <coughs> then you became a trustee. I was very involved, I was chairman of the stewardship committee uh, and then as director uh, uh, I, I found that at every office I was able to play a significant role as treasurer of the organization and that has really enhanced your own personal life. It has made you a better human being, it's made you, it's allowed you to understand how the rest of the world works and you bring a lot of these skills into your business and you see the good thing about Rotary is you bring your rotary skills into business, your rotary philosophy I would say into business and you take your business skills into rotary. So to me it's a perfect match. Many things I do in the company I've learned from rotary like matching grants, like scholarships. Uh, we would do community service projects in the community around us. We tell the workers okay you raise the money the company will match what you have raised. All that from rotary. We run scholarship schemes in our company for workers, children, exactly like what Rotary does. And then I take my business skills into Rotary like running a big 12 million dollar schools project, uh, accountability, you know, responsibility, productivity, is all skills you learn in business. So I really find it's a perfect match, Rotary and business, Rotary and profession. How do you think this works um, with your family life, developing into that? I know it's, uh, it could be very time consuming <coughs> being in Rotary. Did you, do you think that the family has benefited from this also, this trip you've taken in Rotary? Well, let's put it this way. At the time I joined Rotary, um, I mean we were just married then. In fact, I started 
even before I got married. Hmm. Um, I've always felt I've got three priorities in life. My family, my business, and Rotary in that order. Hmm. I would not sacrifice one for the other. And I think if you, if you uh, farm out your time in a methodical, systematic manner, you can take care of all three. When I joined Rotary, I had not even started my business. Wow. I started my business when I was a Rotarian of almost uh, seven, eight years. Well, my business has grown. I mean, we are, we are pretty substantial by any, any, any standards. <coughs> and in Rotary, I've become president, which is not, there's not much more you can do. And my family, I think that's the greatest gift God's given me. I mean, my two children are well placed. Uh, my wife is with me all the time. We have a nice granddaughter. Uh, so what more can you ask? That's true. Very and uh, in that sense, I think I'm a good example of how these three things have been compartmentalized and you, you, you foster all three of them without sacrificing any. But there is some, some element of organization required. And also you have to have the ability to say, this is all I can do, I'm not taking it anymore. Very good. I know it's a balancing act because uh, most Rotarians, especially the ones that start moving up into the organization, it could be very time consuming. So the balance is, uh, I would say, a, kind of a touchy balance that you have to go through. Tell us about the, uh, this year's theme. Each year the international president gets to pick a theme. Yours is be a gift to the world. Uh, I think be a gift to the world is, uh, fits in with my philosophy, with my religion, uh, with my culture. Uh, we are all, we have a temporary ride through earth. The day we are born, there's a day already marked when we have to depart. And uh, in order to make, to make to where we are, what we are, it is possible only because of the many, many gifts that people around us give us. Not only people, the environment, the ambience, the, the community, so many people contribute in order to make a success of you. And there's a time when you have to repay those gifts the, from the time you're born. The world itself, life itself is a gift to begin.